Science, which is a liver imaging reporting and data system. This reporting and data system, which mainly pertains to liver, in particular to malignancies, especially the hepatocellular carcinoma. LIRAT is mainly composed of four individual algorithms, which is intended to standardize the lexicon as well as reporting and care in patients with or at risk of HCC. Mainly, it is in the context of surveillance by ultrasound, diagnosis with the help of CT, MR or contrast enhanced ultrasound and also in the assessment of treatment response with the help of CT or MR. Basically, why do we even need it? Well, there's a need for standardization of HCC imaging to diagnose the lesions early and obviously to subsequently start the treatment. The standardization is in the terms of screening, surveillance, diagnosis, and treatment response assessment. So basically, to start in it in the year 2011 by American College of Radiology, which was followed by updates subsequently. We have to know what all imaging modalities which can be used in LIRATS. We can use ultrasound, CT, or MR. In ultrasound, we can use non-contrast or contrast enhanced. Basically, the non-contrast is mainly used for surveillance. The contrast enhanced ultrasound can be used for diagnosis and treatment response. The CT and MR for diagnosing as well as staging. Before we talk about LIRADS, so what exactly is an observation? Observation generically refers to an area within an imaging appearance that is distinctive from the rest of the liver. This distinctive area can be a true lesion or a pseudo lesion. Well, basically true lesion, especially if it's a mass, it shows mass effect. That mass effect is apparent in more than one phase and it can be located anywhere. Whereas pseudo lesion usually shows peripheral predilection and it occultness on other phase and it doesn't show any mass effect. While hepatocellular carcinoma is the most common primary hepatic malignancy in LIRAS targeted population, other primary malignancies like intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma or combined HCC with intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma can also occur. The observation can be anything from benign to neoplastic and pre-malignant to malignant. The first modality, especially ultrasound, which is used for screening, it has two scores, the category score and the visualization score. The category score is mainly used to determine management, while visualization score is analogous to the breast density score, which is seen in BIRADS. The category score is divided into three categories, the 1, 2, and 3, 1 being negative, 3 being positive, and 2 is a sub-threshold. Well, it's fairly simple. Ultrasound 1 score, category score, which is negative, basically tells us that there is no observation, or if there is an observation, it is only definitely benign observation. As shown in this image, we can uh, see a spot of ultrasound using a curvilinear probe showing entirety of the liver which was a regular nodular surface with ascites but there is no observation in second category which is sub-threshold the observation is then 10 mm which is not definitely benign in this section we can see a sub-centimetric hypoechoic observation which is shown by arrow uh, that warrants short interval follow-up to ensure stability in the third category, observations are, are greater than 10 mm, which is not definitely benign, or if there is evidence of thrombus in vein. And this spot of ultrasound using curvilinear probes, you can see a greater than 10 mm hypoechoic lesion in the right lobe of the liver, which fairly appears solid. And coming to another category of ultrasound LIRAS, the visualization score. It is mainly divided into three scores, A, B, and C. A showing no limitations, B showing moderate limitations, and C showing severe limitations. Basically, no limitations as long as the liver is well visualized in all its entirety. It belongs to visualization score A. In moderate limitations, it is mainly assigned, assigned when there is moderate parenchymal heterogeneity or there is a moderate amount of beam attenuation or there is obscuration of 
a portion of level in severe cases that is visualization score see if there is severe parenchymal heterogeneity beam attenuation or there is obscuration of part of the liver which is more than 50 percent so how do we do the scan first for ct the equipment needed is a multi-detector cd with eight rows of detectors if the patient has underwent local regional treatment pre-contrast is also required in terms of phases we need an arterial phase especially the late arterial phase which is done at around 40 seconds the portal venous phase at 60 seconds 60 to 90 delayed phases 2 to 5 minutes for the mr we need at least a 1.5 or 3 tesla phased array coil um, the phases is similar to that of the ct uh, the arterial pre-contrast the arterial portal venous and delayed the timings are similar to that uh, the contrast agents which we used for MR uh, can be divided into the extracellular contrast agent and epitobiliary contrast agent. The extracellular contrast agent is very much similar to the extracellular intravenous contrast agent which is used for CT. They both show similar kinetics. The epitobiliary contrast agents are of two types which are the gadobinate and gadoxidate. The basic difference between gadobinate dimeglumine and gadoxidate sodium is the uptake, the timing. Gadobinate is relatively slower. It takes slower uptake as well as slower excretion from the hepatocytes. Gadoxidate is the opposite. It, it is uptaken fastly and excreted fastly. Gadobinate dimeglubine takes around one hour to start entering into the hepatocytes, whereas gadoxidate takes around 20 minutes. So, how do you do the scan for contrast enhanced ultrasound? The equipment we need is ultrasound machine with IV microbubble contrast agent. Special thing about this microbubble contrast agent is the, the size of this microbubble contrast agent is similar to that of the RBC. So the contrast essentially, the microbubble essentially behaves like an RBC. So it doesn't enter into the surrounding tissue. Therefore, it gives us the true arterial enhancement whenever there is an enhancement. The phase is in it, the arterial phase. The real-time scanning starts immediately and should be done continuously for the first minute for the arterial phase and to assess the wash of intermittent scanning every 30 to 60 seconds up to 5 minutes is done to evaluate the washout. Before we talk further we have to know what are the major features. Major features of a malignancy and among those features which are what features are specific to HCC and what are the ancillary features. The major features of HCC include the non rem arterial phase hyper enhancement, non peripheral washout, the threshold growth, the size, and the capsule. In the non rem arterial phase hyper enhancement, well, the term itself is very self explanatory. In the arterial phase, there is hyper enhancement which is non rem, that is, it doesn't show any predilection towards the periphery. Basically, the enhancing part must be higher in attenuation or intensity than the liver in arterial phase. The non peripheral washout is, is also self explanatory. Basically, there is washout in the portovenous phase or the delayed phase. And this washout doesn't show any peripheral predilection. Uh, there, there is reduction in enhancement in all or in part relative to the composite liver tissue from earlier to later phases. And the threshold growth is basically defined as the increase in size of a mass by greater than 50% in less than 6 minutes. Uh, what you have to remember is that the measurement should be done ideally on same phase on same sequence and same plane if possible and we should apply the threshold growth only if there is a prior CT or MR scan. We should not assess the threshold growth by comparing the prior ultrasound or contrast ultrasound exams. And the size, the largest outer to outer edge dimension of an observation should ideally be taken. The capsule, the enhancing capsule appearance, which is usually which is the smooth, uniform, sharp border around most or all of an observation, which is unequivocally thicker or more conspicuous than the fibrotic tissue around the background nodules. And these are usually visible as enhancing rim in the portal venous phase, delayed phase, or in the transitional phase. The features of LRM. These features are exactly 
opposite to that of the features of the HCC which include the REM arterial phase hyper enhancement which is opposite of HCC which was non-REM which includes peripheral washout whereas in HCC it was non-peripheral washout which also includes delayed contrast enhancement and target oil uh, restriction. The REM arterial phase hyper enhancement which is also very self-explanatory it is nothing but a subtype of arterial phase hyper enhancement in which the arterial phase enhancement is most pronounced at the periphery which is depicted in the pictorial diagram and the peripheral washout also it is a subtype of washout in which the apparent washout is most pronounced in the observations periphery the delayed contrast enhancement mainly is a central area of progressive post arterial phase enhancement and the target oil restriction uh, there is a concentric pattern on diffusion vehicle imaging characterized by restricted diffusion in the periphery with less restricted diffusion in the center of the observation and the ancillary features what we have to remember mainly is that these ancillary features can be used to upgrade or downgrade a category for example from LR2 to LR3 from LR3 to LR4 or LR4 to LR3 that is to upgrade or downgrade by one category and what we have to especially remember is that ancillary features cannot be used to upgrade and lesion to LR5 category the ancillary features which favoring HCC favoring malignancy not particularly HCC and favoring benignity are given slide before we go any further we have few caveats to remember to ensure specificity major features should be applied only when their presence is unequivocal the size should be measured from outer border to outer border including the capsule if it is seen the size which we measured should be measured in the phase in which the border is best defined and preferably not on the arterial phase because there is perilesion and arterial phase hyper enhancement so to avoid that other phases are preferred and the term washout can apply to any enhancing observation even if there is no arterial phase hyper enhancement the LIRATS categories can be divided into LR non-categorizable LR1 2, 3, 4, 5, LR tumor in main and LRM which is probably or definitely malignant but not necessarily specific to HCC. To remember it easy we can divide the enhancement into arterial phase rim enhancement non rim enhancement the first one is specific to malignancy not necessarily HCC the non rim arterial phase hyper enhancement is specific or more characterized feature of HCC. The arterial phase hyper enhancement is divided in less than 20 greater than 20 mm. The non-rim APHC is divided into three subcategories based on size less than 10, 10 to 19 and greater than 20 mm. Then we have to remember three features which includes the enhancing capsule, non-peripheral washout and threshold growth based on the presence of these features if they are present or not if they are present how many are present they can be divided into three subcategories none if one is present or one or more than one is present to remember it easily first let's take the arterial phase hyper enhancement which is a feature of malignancy not necessarily specific to hcc we can remember it as 33 34 and 44 that is LR3, 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 LR4, LR4 and LR4. For arterial phase non-rim hyper enhancement less than 10, 10 to 19, greater than 20 depending upon the presence of feature can be divided into 334, 445 and 455. What you have to remember especially is that non-rim arterial phase Hyper enhancement, the 10 to 19 mm, the middle category with one feature is actually LR4 or LR5, depending on the what feature is present. For example, if enhancing capsule is present, it is categorized as LR4, or if non peripheral washout or threshold growth is present, it is categorized in LR5. Now, if we remember this table, that is 33, 34, and 44 for APHC, 334, 445, and 455 for non arterial phase hyper enhancement, remembering the categories is very easy. For LIRATS categories, if you talk about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
VLR1, which mainly is the Lee observations, which are 100% certain that it is not malignant. LR2, which is probably benign, it includes the capsules, which is the size, which is less than 20 mm, and it has no major features, no LRM features, or no ancillary features which favor malignancy. For LR3, which has intermediate probability of malignancy, if it is non rheumaterial phase hyper enhancement, less than 20 with no major features. APHE less than 20, then at least one or less than one feature should be present. If it is greater than 20, even without any feature, it can be categorized as LR3 observation. LR4, which is probably HCC, it has high probability, but not 100% certain that it is HCC. If it is non rheumaterial phase hyper enhancement, less than 10 mm with one feature. 10 to 19 with capsule, 20 than 20 mm with no major feature. Arterial phase hyper enhancement if it is less than 20 mm and two or more than two major features if it is greater than 20 mm then one feature is also enough to categorize it as LR4 lesion. LR5 which is definitely HCC, uh, the observation is we are 100% certain that it is HCC. If a non rem arterial phase hyper enhancement, if the observation is 10 to 19 mm with no features or 10 to 19 mm with threshold growth or greater than 20 mm with one or more than one feature. So, after all this, how do we follow up the patient? We can divide it into we know the categories LRNC 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Tumor in vein and LRM. For LR non categorizable, well, we have to repeat or repeat the same imaging modality or the alternate modality within three months. For LR1, which is definitely benign, six month surveillance is good enough. For LR2, probably benign, six month surveillance, or we should consider repeat diagnostic imaging in six months. Intermediate probability LR3, we should repeat or alternative the imaging modality in three to six months. For LR4, which has higher risk of HCC, we have to do a multidisciplinary team approach and it may include biopsy. For LR5, it is a confirmed case of HCC, so there is no need of biopsy. For LRTIV and LRM, it is the same multidisciplinary team approach and it may include biopsy. So in a just for LR4, LRM and TIV, we need biopsy. For LR5, there is no need of biopsy, it is a confirmed case of biopsy. For LR1 and 2, 6 months surveillance. For LR3, 3 to 6 months. For LRNC, we should repeat the imaging, same imaging or the alternate imaging within 3 months. So, this is the end of the topic, LIRADS. Hope I made the topic at least a little simple.